Hey guys, today I have a matching Samsung, it's a Smart Care VRT Plus HE washer. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but uh, essentially it has all the different features, functions, anything you could ever want. It's got it packed in here. Quick wash, delicates, it has rinse and spin, it's just the spin cycle. You've also got extra rinse options. You can pre-soak, you can delay the end or the start, self-clean. You can adjust your temperature, your spin speed, and I'm going to run this one on high. However, I always like to stop and take a second to mention on the Samsungs, you don't have to pretty much ever run it on high. Uh, I have a Samsung, and I like if I feel like I want the clothes to come out really light, I just go medium. Even low is sufficient. Low is still like three times faster than your traditional washer ever spun on the spin cycle. But... Um, Definitely, if you're doing like a big heavy load of uh, like blankets, sheets, or anything like that, you never want to go high. And that's straight out of the owner's manual. You want to go to medium or low. And sometimes when you switch, uh, select bedding, it will auto set that to low. Super delicates, it may even go no spin on you. But just kind of pay attention to that. Medium is about as fast as you'd ever want to go. However, this being a test load, I run four of these. I kind of run everything on high and let it rip. So I've got it on high. I've got a pretty heavy load of towels. So basically doing exactly what I just said not to do. Uh, you're going to get to see, though, that everything on this machine works perfect. But for your extended longevity usage, just kind of pay attention to that spin cycle. Uh, spin speed and uh, how f uh, full you fill it also so as you can see on here I've got it filled about the three-fourths line and they're not packed down and that also straight from the owner's manual you never want to overload it you never want to jam pack the clothes down you want the machine to be able to do its job efficiently and uh, as quickly as possible so it's filling up with water right now we're doing the deep wash cycle so it's going to use a little extra water since I went with a heavy towel load and I'm gonna come back and show you that it's spinning like it's supposed to agitates really well uh, has a nice fast smooth final spin cycle then when it's all done we're gonna move the clothes over to the dryer and I'm gonna show you that the dryer is working perfectly so we'll let it kind of move through here and we'll come back all right now it has moved out of sensing and filling into the actual wash cycle to be a full submersion as it gets started moving those clothes around, has the agitation plate on the bottom, that as it gets going, it does kind of a vortexing motion to suck those clothes down along the sides and push back up out the middle. And it'll run at several different speeds. It's just getting started right now. But it's super quiet. Can't even hear it over my air conditioner. All right. We're moving out of the wash cycle into the rinse cycle. It's draining all that water out nice and fast. Did an excellent job getting those clothes all mixed up during the agitation. You can hear it running that water out nice and fast. And then from here, it's gonna go ahead and drain all the water out, spin to extract the soapy water. Then it'll do a fill up and rinse cycle. Then we'll be on to the final spin cycle which is what I'll come back for next to show you that everything's spinning nice and fast just like it's supposed to. Yeah, a few more minutes in. It's doing an excellent job spinning out, extracting that soapy water from the wash cycle. Nice balance, it's running the drain at the same time. As you can see, nice smooth operation. Just wanted to show that off real quick before we went to the high speed spin cycle. All right, got about five minutes left in the spin cycle. And as you can see, spinning nice and fast. It's even getting a little bit faster. Now this load is super heavy, so it probably won't spin at 1100 RPMs or whatever it is that its top spin is, but it'll get up there pretty fast and the benefit of it spinning this fast is those clothes are going to come out nice and light and it's not going to take as long as it typically would traditionally in your dryer so it's a part of the HE designation you can hear it getting up to speed and even moving 
as fast as it is, super fast. It's still nice, smooth operation. And nice and quiet too. Anyway, it's gonna cut that drying time in half, which is gonna save you on your electricity bill. It's gonna be faster. Tons of benefits. There again, like I said, you just kinda of wanna make sure you know you don't go overboard. It doesn't need to spin super fast, especially with big bulky items. You don't wanna high spin big bulky items. What I've done here with this huge towel load is probably about maxed out. And most of these are hand towels as well. If they were all big, um, big bath towels or beach towels, I would have definitely went on the medium setting. But there you go. I'm gonna let this finish up and we'll move over to the dryer next. All right, now we've got the matching electric dryer over here, ready to go. We're gonna show that off here in just a sec. Clothes are all done, nice and spun out. You can see, nice and light. Yeah, get from the very bottom there. Nice and light, those should dry pretty quick. I'll show you a couple different drying options, but I always like to show that after the spin cycle, everything comes out nice and light. So give me just a sec to toss all that over there. Okay, we are cleaned out here. Huge capacity on this one. I believe it's 5.0 cubic foot capacity. I'll put all the details in the listing description, but we're gonna go ahead and get these started. Now they're in here. You've got your lint trap right here. You wanna make sure that gets, that gets changed out before each load. Nice bright light so you can see what you're doing. Okay, now we come up here and if we just put it on normal and we come over here and we have this option here, Eco Dry. And this is confusing for a lot of people. It was for me until I looked it up in the manual to see what it is. This might as well be a low heat button. A button that essentially dries this whole load with a low heat option. That's all that is. So it takes longer However, it uses less power because it doesn't use as much heat. But you're running it considerably longer. So I guess maybe it balances out or you know you save a little more by not running the heat as high. I don't know. Uh, my time is more valuable. So I always turn that off on just about every single setting. Um, run the heat as high as I can. Now on normal, you're still within the sensor drive. So it's gonna automatically sense how hot, and this is kind of like a guide here. If you wanna control that completely, you go over to time drive. Now you have full control over your heat setting. Okay, once again, I'm gonna turn that off. This doesn't apply because there's no auto sensor. It's just manual at this point. And I can go here to add more time, right here. And I can add even more time or less time. So that's kind of what those options do. So if we go back over here, say to heavy duty, now it's heavy duty, so it automatically turns this off for us. We can also adjust this and say more dry, which just adds more time. Can't adjust that. Um, some of these things you can turn on, wrinkle prevent. What that does is at the end of the cycle, it's gonna run for an additional 60 minutes in 10 minute intervals, 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off. And that gives you like a whole extra hour to get back to the load to fold it before the wrinkles set in. That's what wrinkle prevent is. And that pretty much covers the basis of what we're doing here. So I'm gonna go to time dry, just got it on high heat. We're gonna turn that off and we're gonna push to start. Okay. As you can see in here, sounds great. Nice smooth operation. But it'll actually be even quieter once you get your vent hose on the back. We can kind of hear the blower motor running right now, but that gets muffled and pretty much all you'll be able to hear is just the clothes kind of tumbling around on themselves. See, they're doing an excellent job tumbling. Kind of a weird view, right? <laughs> but it beats the reflection. So you can see now with the heat on its highest setting, I'm gonna show you that it is in fact heating like it's supposed to. So right in between those two red dots, it's taking a surface temperature measurement. So it's 74 degrees on top of the dryer, 73 degrees on the concrete floor. Now let's go ahead and open this up. 
won't be too hot yet, but you'll be able to see that it is getting up to uh, the heat. It can get all the way up to 195 degrees. The inside of your dryer, same thing. Anywhere from 95 all the way up to 195. And uh, this does a little bit better job dispersing the heat. Some of the older dryers have a real concentrated heat, and I'll shoot it in there, and it's like 300 degrees. This stays a little bit more uh, even heat, if you will. So it does a really good job heating. It's letting us know we got the door wide open. We'll push all that back in there. So as you can see, heating like it's supposed to. It's letting us know the door's open. And we're up and running. That's pretty much going to do it for these. Highly recommend you get a surge protector for the outlet on the washer. That will save you all types of headaches down the road because this is all digital now and you need a surge protector, especially where we live. Um, we just had a power surge yesterday and if you don't have something protecting that, these components, this is all CPU controlled, which is fine as long as you have a surge protector. You hear stories about this going crazy or some of the controls not working and that's just like a Wi-Fi router just like your television your computer your cell phone if it's plugged in charging when power outages happen can cause all kinds of things to go wrong so in most uh, big box stores you go back to the light bulb section or wherever they have their little outlet protectors and uh, you will see they make several almost every big uh, company like GE and some of the other guys they all make them specifically for refrigerators and washers so pick one up 10 15 bucks totally worth it highly 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 recommend it it's on the first couple pages of almost every single owner's manual for your fridge and your washing machines not a lot of people know that so that's my advice on that and I, guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. If this helped you out or gave you some information you didn't have, please consider liking and subscribing. I do videos like this all the time and try to put as much helpful information out as I can. Thanks. You guys have a great day.